G'day guys, welcome to Lucy's channel, Lucy Lane, the Queen of Belmain. Today we're gonna answer a whole bunch of questions and also make sure you hang out to the end of this video because we went to a famous German Shepherd's birthday party and we got a whole bunch of B-roll of that and we also asked some very experienced German Shepherd handlers what is one piece of advice you can give to a newbie German Shepherd owner? Also guys, make sure you pay attention to the advice from the young 13 year old boy in this video because his answer blew me away. Alrighty, question number one. How did you prevent resource guarding slash food aggression with Lucy? I'm getting a male German Shepherd soon and I am feeling really prepared. However, this is one thing I am not prepared, so prepared with. So this is really easy. Essentially what I did with Lucy from the day I got her, I played with her food. Every moment she had food, I'd always be playing with it, making her eat out of my hand. I'd take her food away, I would give it back. I really did practice from a very young age, from the day we got her to about a year old. And now, and now like two and a half years old, I still occasionally do this with Lucy. And I do this with her toys as well. So just a, an easy exercise, I found this alone has really prevented Lucy from food aggression and resource guarding herself. I could essentially have anyone in the house come up to Lucy, take her food off her, and she'd just sit there and be like, well, that sucks. Hopefully you're gonna give back to me, I'll just wait. So that's essentially the attitude that you want with your pup. Number two, any tips on leash training? Our German Shepherd Coco is starting to pull a lot and gets distracted quite easily. I keep a tin of treats in my pocket, she can hear them jingling, that keeps her attention for a while, but not long enough. Squirrels and pigeons are way more fun. Yes, from a fellow pigeon chaser, I know exactly what you mean. A couple of things you can do, you can try a no pull halties, I've tried them before, or a no pull harness, I actually find those worked a little bit better, but essentially I found with the no pull halties that Lucy was just pulling through them after about a week and we're going through all these expensive halties, uh, wasn't financially frugal. So, so what I essentially did, I got my trainer to teach me how to use a prong collar and that has been a game changer ever since. So I utilize a prong collar for training with Lucy most of the time. Um, I don't use it all the time, but when I feel like I'm gonna go into new environments and things like that, I will have a prong collar on Lucy. Um, simple and easy and effective way to just correct them. You can just give them a little collar pop and you can get their attention very, very easily. Prong collars can have a little bit of stigma about them, but used correctly, they are a very effective and safe tool. Much safer than pulling just on a flat collar. A lot of people don't realize the amount of trachea damage a dog's gonna do over time just by pulling on a flat collar across their neck. And it's gonna cost you thousands of dollars in vet bills to help the condition not get any worse. But apparently, once the trachea damage is done, it is irreversible. So if you decide to get on the prong collar route, just remember, get a trainer, a qualified trainer, to show you how to use it and how to correct your dog whilst using it, just for best practices. Question number three, how do you guys deal or prevent issues such as hip dysplasia? Now this is a massive thing in the German Shepherd world, actually in the large dog world I think. Uh, hip dysplasia, it, it rears its ugly head up every now and then and it's a horrible thing, especially when it happens to young dogs, young German Shepherds. Um, we're really lucky genetically. Lucy's very genetically blessed. Uh, touch wood thus far, no issues, no problems. She's had scans, she's had all the testing. She is tip top, but not to say that this couldn't uh, rear its ugly head, especially like arthritis and things, down into the future. That is still a very possible scenario. So what we do with Luce, I think of all, keeping your German Shepherd lean. First of all, have a good diet and keep them lean. Now I do see a lot of German Shepherds that are way too big. They're not supposed to look like big sausages. They're supposed to be lean, muscular, athletic, herding dogs. And a good way that I like to gauge on Lucy how lean Lucy is, I'll throw a photo up here, um, one you've probably seen before, but I like to have that rear rib. I like to have like one rib at the, at the back, just kind of protruding through her skin there. I have had comments in the past of people like, your German Shepherd's way too lean, that is incorrect. So the next thing I like to do with Lucy too, obviously she does a lot of exercise, a lot of running around and mucking around and being a crazy pup, but a big part of her exercise is swimming. I try to get her to swim about five out of seven days a week and she, she is a through and through water baby. Again, I've said this in multiple videos, Lucy's one of the strongest swimmers I've ever seen when it comes to a dog. And especially when a dog like a German Shepherd, they're not that comfortable in the water. So Lucy has turned her weakness, essentially her weakness according to her breed, into one of her strengths. And again, I attribute 
a lot of swimming and water activities to Lucy's lean, muscular, and very powerful physique. Next question, how do you stop puppy biting? Great question. We all know that these little German Shepherd pups and like Belgium Alamar pups with their little needle teeth, they, they are excruciating when they clamp down on you. Um, I think we've all experienced it. So with Lucy, we just redirected her little biting and stuff onto like a tug. Um, also, if she nipped us on the hand or something, we'll just correct her and say no um, in like a loud, assertive voice. But essentially, Lucy grew out of it. She just grew out of it. Um, and that was pretty much the main contributor to that. Next question, does Lucy have a family tree? Do you know when her ancestors came from Germany? And congratulations. Yes, we do know all these details. And this is actually something I'm going to include when we hit 50,000 subscribers. And I'll include it into the episode that we're gonna do about Lucy's breeder and how people can contact them because there's been so much questions asked around where does Lucy come from? Can I get essentially one of Lucy's siblings? Um, has been a very popular topic. So I thought we'll save that for a special occasion hitting 50,000 subs. Does Lucy know protection work? No, she does not. But when I first got Lucy, if I knew everything I knew now back then, I may have gone down that road into family protection with Lucy. Um, I believe she would have been a great candidate for it. Um, but again, I may have sacrificed some of her really good loving qualities that she has. So look, a bit of a double-edged sword, but I think she would have made a great family protection dog. She's got a lot of drive. She's very sociable. She loves kids. She loves being around people. Uh, but at the same time, she's very protective uh, of the house and the surroundings. She's very protective of her mum, especially. and. She's also good around all dogs and animals. So look, I think she would have been a great candidate for it, but unfortunately it's not something I really knew much about back when we first got Lucy. But my next German Shepherd, when we do acquire either a German Shepherd or we may even go join the dark side of a Belgian Mel, just depends where we are at with our lives. I would like to form that dog into a more family protection style dog. Um, and that'll be a whole new kettle of fish and a whole new video series we can do as well. But when we come to that bridge, we will cross it with you guys. Next question, I'm getting a GSD puppy in a few weeks. Any tips on crate and potty training? Look, I've done heaps of videos on this type of stuff. Well, heaps, I've probably done like two videos on it. They are out there somewhere, have a look around. Essentially, you just wanna start crate training as soon as possible because crate training will help you with potty training as well. <laughs> so suited, so suited. Lose. Oh, yeah. Please. Do you want a party hat? Tip for a new German Shepherd owner. Go. Ah, oh, get yourself a great trainer. Nice. Master of puppies, we miss you. Woo. You need to come back. To <laughs> Youngest dog handler getting around, and probably the most experienced. Hey, what's one tip for a new German Shepherd owner or someone who wants to get a German Shepherd? Go. Uh, you have to. I think first thing, recall. Recall. Recall for the first thing, and then also stay. Awesome. Those two. Those two you start with. Wicked, wicked. Yeah. What's your channel name? Uh, and Instagram? On Instagram, Harley underscore AE underscore GSD. Wicked. Yeah. Make sure you go follow her, guys. Nikki, I'd expect nothing less from you. <laughs> it is amazing. With the Bentley's birthday cake. 
And he has the birthday boy. Baby. No, no. <laughs> God damn it. One, one, one tip for a new German Shepherd owner. What do you reckon? Since you've got one, a uh, famous Always German Shepherd in Sydney. Hey? Always stay to spend time with your dog. Dude, that's the best thing I think I've heard. I love it. What's, what's one tip for a new German Shepherd owner? Oh, someone oh who wants a German God. Shepherd. Go on, go on. Just um, on the spot. What is it? Training every day. Please. Please. What's happening? Huh? Big girl? Are you used to be his papa? Huh?